Alrights, aside from the haircut and the glasses guys, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to boost your FPS in 2023. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Editing Dave here, and I just want to mention really quick, I've had people say that they've gained over 60, almost 100 FPS from this, so I really recommend you guys watch all the way to the end. Alright guys, so the very first thing you're going to want to do is go and head over to your settings page, check update and security, and just go ahead and click check for updates. Windows updates will harm your performance, especially if they're being downloaded in the background. If your computer is downloading Windows updates in the background, you'll notice high ping and all kinds of garbage going on. There are some optional updates which you can choose to download. I usually would recommend it, but since I'm recording it right now, I'm not going to do that right now. Especially if you have it down here and it's telling you to restart, go ahead, restart, get all that installed, and that should give you a nice little boost. Next thing you're going to want to do is go head over to gaming and make sure game mode is either on or off. I don't really think it matters. Off has been proven to be better more recently, but forever it has been a debate whether it actually does anything or if it's good or if it's bad. If you guys want a Windows 11 guide, let me know. Most of it should transfer over to Windows 11. I've used Windows 11 before. I'm not a huge fan of it, but most of it should transfer over. So just go ahead and make sure game mode's off. Turn Xbox game bar off. If you have an NVIDIA computer and you want to clip things, turn, just turn it off, man. Like you have, you have shadow play. Shadow play's way better. Next up, you're going to search background apps or just, I guess, background. And you can just go ahead and click on background app. I turned just all of mine off because I don't really like any apps running in the background, especially like an app like Cinebench or Minecraft. One big app I would definitely turn off in the background is Xbox, both Xbox and Xbox console companion, because multiple times on my main computer, I've been getting terrible FPS and terrible ping in my game when my computer, like for instance, if I reinstall Windows or something, or if I uninstall Forza, my computer would be downloading Forza in the background without my permission, without me even knowing. And I'm just sitting here wondering why I've been at 300 ping all day. Just turn it off. And next up, just head over to apps and you can see all these apps that you have. Uh, I'd recommend uninstalling any apps you don't use or need. Like I haven't used Heaven in a long time, but I do use it occasionally. So I'm going to leave it installed. HP Smart, that's for my printer downstairs. I don't think I've used it once because I can just print my stuff through Google Chrome. So I'll, un I'll go ahead and uninstall that later. If you use Chrome and you have Firefox installed, I mean, why? Like Skype, Skype, I'll uninstall that. If you use Xbox on your computer, I'd leave anything Xbox related. And I'd leave anything Java or Windows related, like Microsoft stuff and anything related to Nvidia or like your audio, like I think it's Waves Max Audio or something. Yeah, uh, my speakers are by Max Audio. So I'm going to leave that installed, especially if you have like those pre-installed bloatware games like Solitaire or Candy Crush or whatever on here. My friend King has a 256 gig SSD. He had like nine or 10 gigs of just freaking bloatware games on there. So something really quick you can do. Well, it might be quick. It might be slow depending on your SSD or yourself or whatever is make sure that you have a good, a decent amount of storage left. I have 37.4 gigs free on my C drive, which doesn't sound like a lot, but considering it's a 128 gig drive that actually only has 118 gigs of space, it's pretty good. If you have like red, if you have no space left, one, you're not going to be able to download or install anything. And two, it's going to make your performance suck. Your drive is going to be working slow. So go ahead and like uninstall any old video clips or like your old downloads. Like I could uninstall all of this because I don't really need it. So just delete all of it. Look, that's 10 gigs right there. Now, if we go back to this PC, 47.5. So we freed up 10 gigs just like that. You're going to either want to press Windows and R on your keyboard or go ahead, press Windows and search run. You just go ahead and click on percent temp percent. You can have a bunch of temp files that also take up a bunch of space on your drive. So just scroll to the bottom or the top and select it. I scroll to the bottom for some reason and drag up. Go ahead, right click, click delete. We got about another gig in here or so. All of these are the stuff that's being currently used by the system. So just go ahead, click that check mark and click on skip. Don't worry. This is not going to harm Windows. If it needs them again, it'll create them because they're all stored to the apps. So just go ahead and do that every once in a while. And I'm not worried about this drive because I have games and videos and stuff on here and it's a terabyte and I have over half of it free still. But yeah, especially if you're in the red, just go ahead and run that really quick. And then you can do some other advanced stuff. If you guys want to see a disk cleanup tutorial, uh, go ahead, drop a like and comment down below. And I'll show you guys in depth how to do a disk cleanup through like disk management and all kinds of stuff. All right, next thing you're going to want to do, you're a gamer, you probably use Discord, right? Right? Go ahead, open Discord. Next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead, click on settings, go to game overlay and turn it off i mean you can just alt tab to discord worst comes to worst i don't see why you need an overlay coming over your game then we're gonna do a similar thing also in discord i shouldn't have even closed it i'm just a bot go into settings again go to advanced and turn hardware acceleration off it will use your cpu and gpu to make discord run faster and smoother personally i don't really care because i'm not playing discord as a game and then we're gonna want to do the same thing as for google chrome open chrome go ahead go to settings and then search 
hardware and it should bring up use hardware acceleration available go ahead turn it off all right bet next up similar to windows updates we're just going to be going over some nvidia stuff if you have an amd or an intel or whatever else pretty much the same thing but just open up your graphics card whatever your app go to drivers and make sure your drivers are up to date i recently updated drivers in here just go ahead click check for updates if there's new drivers download them if there's not you're good to go as you can see we have the latest geforce game ready driver and if you don't have geforce experience or whatever you can find drivers on the website just look up your graphics card and then new drivers and they'll come up right click on your desktop or i guess you can search in windows and search for the nvidia control panel what you guys are going to want to do is go to manage 3d settings and the very third the very first thing you're going to want to do you're going to see all these settings you're going to be kind of overwhelmed possibly maybe i don't know if you do stuff with computers a lot but just click on preferred graphics processor and make it your high performance nvidia processor all right guys once you have selected your high performance nvidia processor as your graphics card because why wouldn't you go ahead and just copy down all these settings these should be the best settings uh if there's something that's wrong let me know and i'll go ahead and pin a pin your comment or i'll make an updated comment and i'll pin mine uh texture filtering quality is there a maximum performance one or is it just performance oh there's high performance okay so go ahead and put that on high performance if you don't already but yeah pause the video copy it all down prefer maximum performance and most of it should be off if it's image related anisotropic filtering doesn't actually do much i think it was like a one frame per second difference if that and then the video that ltt made in heaven benchmarks but yeah these should be the best the best settings so let's go ahead and copy these and then once you have that click apply and once again if i'm wrong go ahead comment down below and i'll update it and i'll pin your comment or i'll make my own comment and pin it Dude, it thundered for like a minute and a half. Alrighty guys, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do, I did plug my laptop in for this, is if you're on a laptop, you can just go down here, right click and click power option, but search power and click choose a power plan and it might be hidden if it is go ahead click on show additional plans and click on high performance there's an ultimate performance code i have it on my computer but i've been told it doesn't actually do much so i will test it for you guys in a future video i will test whether ultimate performance actually makes a difference or not but once once you have selected high performance you can go ahead and adjust it um this is just what i prefer it's actually off kind of on battery i prefer my laptop to turn off fairly quickly so that i save battery life but i usually like it where it's about an hour or two before my display turns off i wish they had an hour and a half i'll just leave it at an hour and i don't really like my computer going to sleep like if i go and eat dinner or go into town to eat dinner or something i don't want my computer to be asleep when i get back especially if i'm like rendering something i go ahead and put that on three hours that way it does go to sleep if it's overnight so my monitors turn off and it will preserve the longevity of my monitors because if you just have your computer on all the time you will get screen burning and that's kind of annoying it really hurts the monitor and then just go ahead click on save changes and you'll be on high performance once you've done all that and you close out of here you're now ready to go game at some hopefully a lot higher frame rates i've had people come in here like my friend king and he asked me how to boost fps and i just went through and did all that on his computer for him and he told me that he went from getting about 120 to 144 to getting above 200 fps in game and i've had other people come in like actually fairly recently one guy commented he went from getting 60 in game to getting i think 144 in game but it, it can be a, it can make a pretty insane difference if you follow these steps especially if you're on a lower end computer if you guys got a boost from this and if you're watching to this point in the video uh if you found this video entertaining informative or helpful or boostful in any way please drop a like and subscribe to the channel as it really does help the videos do better it'll help more people get a better gaming experience without further ado guys that's pretty much it for today so i'll see you guys next time